last year, you were you know, the rookie defensive coordinator. Um, how is this feeling different this year? I mean, you didn't seem like you actually lacked the confidence last year, like you were swimming or anything, but Eric, can you approach this differently just because it's like your first year? I think with anything, like when you do things over and over again, you get the reps and you get more comfortable with it. So being my second year doing this, it, it, there is a more of a comfort level in me doing it, but things from that standpoint, not a lot has changed. Still pushing the envelope to see how much better we can get, how much better I can be to make sure our players understand exactly what we're looking for when we go out on that field. So for me, it's all about a daily strive in yourself to how better can you be than you were yesterday. So that's what it's been about for me this second year round. How much better can I be? You know, it's OTAs, training camp. How much better can I be the second time around? What do you like about Darquise Denard? Yeah, Darquez. Darquez is a veteran who's he's done a great job for us. He he steps in, he does a really good job of communicating out there. He's where he needs to be. And the biggest thing I like about Darquez is he does a really great job of teaching the younger guys. Uh, Darquez has seen a lot of football, played in a lot of different schemes. So with him having that experience and that knowledge, he does a really good job of just putting his arm around the younger guys and, and teaching them. You know, saying it in a way sometimes a player can get it from a, another player better than he does from a coach. So it's been great having uh, Dark Quiz out there. How much does Jason Barrett being back on the field you know, boost your secondary? Yeah, Jason Barrett, just first and foremost, just his presence, just being out there, I think it, it, it lifts us all up. Just seeing JV, just the energy that he brings. Everybody's pulling for JV, you know, uh, at a, you know, tough injury last year, and we missed him a ton. So he's fighting to get back, and he's doing everything in his power to knock out his rehab and be in the best shape possible for when he's able to come back. So I'm excited just to just to see him around the building, just to see him talking with the guys. It's just it's great having JB in his presence felt in that room. Corey Unlin said it's so great to have him just in the room because of his knowledge and what he brings to these discussions about Right, yeah, that's, that's another guy, like JV, he's, he's done it. Like everything we're asking these young guys to do, he's done it, and he's done it at the highest level. You know, former All-Pro player, Pro Bowl player, like if, if there's anybody those guys can learn from, it's JV. So with him, again, and his, how smart of a player he is, also with the talent, like his ability is just off the charts. So if I'm one of those young guys, I'm definitely sitting by him, talking to him as much as I possibly can. What have your impressions been of the young linebackers, Gemmel, um, Saguno Luby, and uh, McCrary Ball? Yeah, we got three three really good young linebackers there. I think they can they can help us. You know, they all all three guys they are very, very smart guys. All right, very smart guys, and like what I saw from them in college. You know, these guys can run, they can hit, they're physical, very athletic guys. So I think they're a really good scheme fit for what we do defensively, and I see them fitting right in. Those guys are also, it's, it's good. I know I spoke about it with the, with the secondary, but also with our linebacker core, when you can go into a room as a young guy and you have Fred, Aziz, and Dre in there, like you have no, you have no problem, you have no, no way but to get better, right? You're listening to Fred Warner, you're listening to Dre, how they do things, how they operate on a day to day basis. Like those guys have, those guys are gonna be really good for us, and they're gonna ascend quickly just because of the guys they're learning from as well. Have you noticed since the Forest Buckner was created that Eric Armstead has, has taken on more of a leadership role? Has that been a conscious thing for him to, to be tone setter? And is, you know, being at OTAs and running down ball carries 30 yards downfield in you know, early June, I guess, is that a is that a signal of that? Yeah, I think Eric has always been a leader since when Buck was here. I mean, Eric has been a leader in his own way. You know, he's done a great job uh, when Buck was here, and now that Buck is not here, Eric has, has done a fantastic job of leading that defensive line group. And he does it not only by talking. He doesn't have to talk. He's out there. He's working every day. He's running to the ball. He's showing guys, first and foremost, how it should look. So that's how you lead. You know, it doesn't have to be the loudest guy in the room, but you lead first and foremost by example and being accountable to your teammates every day, showing those guys that he really cares about them. And that's, a, that's what Eric does on and off the field. So you know, Eric is just a tremendous leader. And I'm you know, very thankful, appreciative to have him to be able to coach him. You know, 
know, not only as a player, but all the stuff Eric does in the community. I was trying to highlight that, like, that's what a pro looks like. And he's done it the right way for many years. So very, very happy for Eric and what he does. I know he's affected a lot of people outside of this building, a lot of young kids who back in Sacramento, the things that he do in the community. That's what I'm most proud of for Eric. Do, do you remember maybe when you, when you first came here and joined the staff, when you first observed that about Eric and what that was like for you? Like, okay, I've seen him on tape and what kind of player he is, but um, when, when you first got to know him, when that really clicked for you that he was that type of leader? Just just being around him, spending time with him, you can you can tell right off the bat. Like he's a he's a difference maker. He he was a he's a different guy. He stuck out in that way right when you meet him. So it did it didn't take it didn't take me long to figure that out. Like this is a this is a special special player, a special guy here. And so it, it doesn't take long to see those guys. Eric is truly one of the special guys in our in our league. Something you guys talked a lot about last year was what a surprise Ambry Thomas was and. He's someone who's done a lot of community work this offseason all over the world. What does that say about his maturity really being so early in his career and, and so young? Yeah, for a young guy to do the things that he's done, it's uh, it's great to see that, you know, as a young, because you, you don't see many young guys get in, but you just see, I think you just see the guy's heart. You see what he's what he's truly about. You see his character right off the bat, and that's the first thing he wants to do. His first true offseason is to go and, and help out, go and reach back and help the community. So that's uh, it was cool to see that from Ambry. And Ambry, is, he's still still growing as a player, as a, as a young man, we're all growing. And he'll continue to you know ascend and do better. It seems like you've had confidence in Talanoa Hufunga since he got here last year. What inspires that confidence? And has he taken his game to the next level in year two? Uh, the confidence in, in Huff is just his daily approach, right? I mean, it's not a surprise to me that Huff plays well, that he does great things for our team because of his approach every day. So it's not like you get out there on game day and he surprises me because I see the way he works. I see the way he's in the building. He's always asking questions in meetings. He's always looking to get the answer and get it right and get it done exactly how we want it done. So it's just his consistent approach daily. That's what sets him apart. That's what it will allow him to be a really good player. So, so he approached the game like a veteran from the moment he got here? Day one. Day one. You know, day one, Huff has been a pro. Got day it. one. It, it hasn't changed, right? And that's, uh, that's something a lot of young guys, they don't, they come in that way, kind of, but Huff has been consistent. Sometimes it dies off, but Huff has been that way day one, and he's still that same way right now. You know, so, so I'm really, really happy with where Huff is. Daniel Bullock said he looks like he's just a little bit faster, a little twitchier this season. He worked with Troy Palomalo after an offseason. Yeah. Have you seen that same thing from him? Yeah, for sure. Like this offseason has been you know, eye-opening for me just to see Huff, the way he's communicating out there, much better, louder, better communicator. Like you, you do see him move faster because I think things are starting to slow down for him. As a rookie, you know, things are flying. You can't. It's hard to figure things out as a rookie. You're just trying to figure out where do I align and what do I have on this particular play. Now Huff is getting more comfortable where he's able to decipher, okay, how is the offense trying to attack me and where can I be, put myself in the right position to make plays. So Huff is uh, he's definitely ascending in, in the right direction and happy. And that's happy with where he is just because that's what OTAs is about. You know, guys just coming in, owning the techniques and trying to get better every day. You see a guy like Huff do that. You see the, the purpose for it, and you know, it's been great for him. From a, from, a debate, from a defensive perspective, how, how are you seeing Trey Lance's improvement and just how he's going about throwing the ball? No lazy throws, it looks like, out there that he's challenging guys. Yeah, I think Trey has done a, he's done a great job. You know, it's, it's good to see him you know, with his command and him running the offense, and he's zipping it past us a lot, so he's, he's, he's making it tough on us. Uh, uh, Trey has done a great job. It's good to see him just coming into his own role as a leader and being able to take control of the team. So you know, we're fired up, uh, fired up for Trey and what he can do for us. What's um, Nick Sorensen's role on under Shaq? Yeah, Nick has been Nick has been uh, helping out with the uh, with the linebackers. He's been working with Johnny, assisting with the linebackers. Um, Nick is a guy who you know, I'm very excited to have because. You know, you get a guy who's played, a guy who's done it in this league and done it for a long time, you know, there's instant credibility when he steps into the room and he's talking to those guys and he's coached a lot of ball as well. So uh, Nick was 
very pleased with him and what he's done, helping our guys and the linebacker level, not only the linebackers, but just his expertise in the back end as well, him being a former safety coaching the Nichols before. So he has a lot of experience in coaching and in playing. So Nick has, Nick has done a fantastic job for us. Nick, why didn't you um, have a second interview last year with the Vikings? Or this year for it? Yeah, I mean, uh, the deal with the Vikings, it was outstanding. Uh, the ownership group there, all the, all the people I met with there, it was, it was outstanding. Yeah, I thought it was a really good interview. Uh, great organization there. And uh, it was just, the fit, uh, everything about the opportunity with, for me and my family and everybody involved, like it, everything has to be the right fit for us. And I think for myself, you know, I wanted another chance, you know, another season to grow and develop more, become a better coach, a better leader myself. So when I do become a head coach, I want it to be the right opportunity because I'm not just in it just to be a head coach and say, oh, I'm a head coach, like if I do it, I want to be very successful at it and I want to do it for, for a long time. So it's not about, for me, just jumping at the first opportunity, but for all of us, whatever opportunities we get presented in life, you want it to be the best for you where you can see longevity in it and, and make a lasting impression and be able to impact lives just beyond just me. It's not about me, it's about all the people who I'm serve and making sure that I'm in that right fit where I can serve in a capacity where I can really impact a lot of people. We're really close to Johnny Holland. How good is it to have him back on the field? Oh, it's, it's great. You know, Johnny, is, Johnny has been a tremendous blessing to me. And now in my career, you know, he's my first, first linebacker coach in the NFL, but yeah, he's just been a blessing to my life, to my family. To me, Johnny is like a, a father figure to me. He's taught me a lot and I learned from him you know, he's been my mentor in coaching, encouraged me to get into coaching. And he's been a great mentor to me, not only teaching me about football, but just the life skills about, you know, how to handle money, how to handle relationships with your wife, your kids, like, and, that, and that's what it's about, right? Johnny is, uh, Johnny is very, very special to me because, you know, it's, and it's good to see like what he's went through and the, the people that he's able to impact from his story, that's even more powerful to me for Johnny. And I'm just, I'm excited to see him back. And anytime, he's just always positive, always has a smile on his face, always uplifting, always bringing great energy to, to any room he steps in. So excited to have him back, for sure. What you said about Mike Anderson, there was an awful lot that went into it. But I guess when you just started coaching, not too long ago, I mean, do you just feel like Part of it, obviously, you could be a head coach, but maybe you just don't feel well, quite ready. Is that, is that right? Or, or would you be ready? Yeah, I, think, I think with, with any job you get, like for everybody here or whoever, everybody has, everybody started somewhere and everybody was technically not ready when they first started. Like, how do you, how do you say someone is truly ready? No one knows until you actually get in that position and you go and show people, right? And I was first time defense coordinator. Is he ready to be, I don't, am I ready? I don't know, but you go out and you just, you just work as hard as you can and be the best that you can be each day. And you just prove to yourself and prove to people that you're capable of handling any job. And that's for any of us out here. Everybody has to have a first time starting something. And once you do it enough times, you'll become good at it. So. It's not about not being ready. It's uh, I'm ready to go <laughs> at any moment. It's about, to me, head coaching, this is just about leading men. And that's what I do on the defensive side. You get the head coaching job, I understand a lot more responsibilities. But it's essentially how are you leading men and can you lead them in a positive direction? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you guys. Thank you.